What is a curious amalgam? I have no idea. What the heck is an amalgam? Is that a euphemism for some kind of disease? Kyomibukai Kongobutsu. Notre curieux amalgam. Woman Haochida Gonghejin. It's what happens when you leave your casserole in the oven for too long. Welcome to our Curious Amalgam, the weekly podcast brought to you by the Antitrust Law Section of the American Bar Association. Our Curious Amalgam explores the fascinating and increasingly overlapping world of competition, consumer protection, data protection, and privacy law. Each week, we bring you leading global experts on the most compelling issues of the day. Enjoy the show. Welcome to our Curious Birthday, the one-year anniversary celebration of our Curious Amalgam. We're having a party, and you're invited. I'm Alicia Downey, the host of this special episode. Today, we're going to look at the origin story of our Curious Amalgam and find out about that curious name. And we're also going to talk to two special guests about uh, where the podcast has been and where it's going. We'll hear from members of the podcast committee about their favorite episodes or favorite moment in an episode. My two special guests today are Brian Henry, who is the immediate past chair of the antitrust law section and one of the creators of this podcast. Brian wears many hats as an in-house counsel at Coca-Cola, including competition counsel for the Americas. Welcome, Brian. Thanks, Alicia. Really glad to be here. And my other special guest is John Roberti. Coming to us from his well-appointed basement studio, John has been with the show from the very beginning as producer, writer, director, and on-air talent. John has co-hosted 75 episodes and counting with Style and Panache. Welcome, John. Thanks, Alicia. So what I thought we would do to start is um, I'm dying to know about how this all got started Brian? Sure. I'd love to uh, provide some background on that. So podcasting in the antitrust section really started several years ago with um, Adam Beagle and Margaret Stafford put together a podcasting program uh, in connection with our spring meeting in Washington. Uh, You may recall seeing folks uh, in the podcasting room uh, recording some of their, some of the episodes. Uh, We launched those uh, episodes on the Legal Talk Network. And really, that was our kind of entree into the into the space. Uh, when I became chair and actually preparing to become chair, I thought a lot about podcasting. I actually listened to many, many podcasts on my long commute into the office every day, or at least I did <laughs> when I commuted into the office. And, um, you know, the idea of having a regular weekly podcast that kept our membership up to date and informed on regular, you know, regular ongoing topics in the, in, in the space that, that the antitrust section covers um, occurred to me. And we decided to put something together and launch it uh, at our leadership meeting in August of 2019. And does anybody remember, this is a, a pop quiz, when the very first show went on the air? Uh, I think it should have been the morning of August 12th. You got it. Um, well, thank, thank you, Brian. Um, somebody else who was there at the beginning is Elise Dorsey, um, who has uh, been a frequent host of the show. And she had this to say in response to the question, what's your favorite episode? I'm Elise Dorsey, and my favorite memory with our Curious Amalgam goes back right to the beginning. The very first day we were all in the studio, we lined up, you know, a bunch of sessions to record, and we had really no idea what we were doing or how any of it was going to go. But we were just so excited to be there and to be doing it. And looking back over the last year, I'm just so proud and humbled by what we've accomplished. And thank you all for bearing with us. I'm so excited to see what comes next. John, is that how you remember it? I mean, it's, it's, that's not too far off. Um, you know, what we lacked in experience, um, well, we also lacked in, in, in actually talent. 
So the, the very first episode that we ever did, the very, very, very first episode we ever recorded, so it wasn't actually the first one that got dropped, but the first one we we recorded, we did with uh, with somebody, a, a close friend of mine, Katie Robson, who, who's a wonderful lawyer at Amalvin and Myers. Um, and we sat down and, and, and Katie and I had talked ahead of time and we had scripted the whole thing. Um, so we, we sat down and we basically read, read our scripts to each other. Um, and it was really quite awful. Um, so bad that our producer came in and said, listen, that was, that was a good try. Now do it again from the beginning and I'm taking your scripts. And that was one of the first and most important lessons we learned about this was actually, I've said this for a long time, preparation is overrated, but in, 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 as we've done this, what I think we've learned is it's a lot better if we're just talking to people about it, um, you know, talking to people about what they know about. Nowadays, we actually don't even allow people to send questions in advance. We, don't, we, will, we will allow guests to see some bullet points, but we, we don't believe in that sort of scripting. So um, I, I, remember, I remember thinking, coming out of that first day saying, well, we're going to get better. Yeah, and I would uh, note that I think the success of our Curious Amalgam podcast is greatly due to the fact that we had a podcast studio uh, and a very experienced podcast engineer, Blake Althan, at Human Factor in Arlington, uh, Virginia. The uh, He has a great studio set up, very comfortable. Uh, it encourages the guest to, to, to be relaxed and to speak freely uh, in, a, in a comfortable environment. I, I do believe that that whole setup really materially contributed to kicking this podcast series off on the right foot. I know we've gone to doing a lot of kind of remote recording lately, but that was an important first step to to establish a baseline of the high level of professionalism that we wanted to bring to it, yet bringing a you know very comfortable environment to get the best out of our, our guests. Yeah, it would, it would, Brian, it would impress the heck out of our guests to come into an actual studio um, and, you know, see the, see the microphones and, you know, have people say, don't touch that. Um, it was, a, it was, it, it, it really actually in, in all seriousness, having the, have the section having been generous to support us and going out to, to a, uh, to a real professional studio to help us get recorded, help make these first episodes sound super okay. Well, that's great. And in the course of 75 episodes, uh, there have been so many topics covered. Uh, When I asked the podcast committee to just record, uh, you know, uh, and and identify one episode that they liked, a lot of them had trouble. Uh, But Christina Ma, who is John's co-chair of the podcast committee, had this to say. Hi, Christina Ma here, co-chair of this year's podcast committee. My favorite episode from this past year is number 18, What Did the Numbers Say? Using Data as a Cartel Compliance Tool. This year, there's been so much talk about big data, data privacy, and how to use antitrust and consumer protection laws to address data issues. What I love about the episode is it's really an inward-looking view of how we can use data for good and how we can use data to improve legal outcomes and compliance. As outside counsel, it's always also interesting to hear about the issues that in-house counsel deals with day in, day out. And also it's on a topic, cartels, um, which I don't come across too frequently in my practice. Anyways, it's a wonderful episode. Highly recommend it for those that have not listened in. So Christine has really identified the role of this podcast in bringing uh, cutting edge issues uh, to the surface, uh, both that allow outhouse, outside counsel to understand in-house counsel's role and vice versa. Uh, what do you guys think about that? Well, you know, we, we, uh, <laughs> we hope that we came up with one or two interesting episodes. We, we tried to do, um, and this was an example, we tried to not cover the same topics with the same people over and over. Um, part, of, part of that meant going and trying to look at an issue and maybe turning, turning things on the side a little bit. Um, and, and asking questions about, uh, you know, why are we doing things this, this way or, or how could we be doing things differently? The episode that, that Christina mentions, we actually, it was very interesting. It, it actually didn't involve, um, it, it involved uh, a group of people who were 
who basically were using data, using math to try to figure out where the next compliance issues were going to be coming up for their for their clients. So um, it was it, this what Christian is talking about in general matters is really something we, we had been trying to do from the beginning. Yeah, and I think her comment also highlights the importance of the name, the our curious amalgam. As you heard at the beginning of the show, a lot of folks had different takes on it. Um, that name was very intentional. Um, we we spent quite a bit of time trying to come up with a name that captured the fact that the antitrust section is not just competition law, right? She, uh, Christine, referenced the you know privacy uh, podcast, and we have lots of podcasts on consumer protection issues, and it's very hard in a space of two, literally two or three words to capture the fact that the antitrust section is very diverse uh, substantively. Um, and we had lots of, lots of ideas that were thrown around uh, early on, a uh, motion to discuss the curious cases, where things are, the marketplace of ideas behind the brief. Those are a few that were, were thrown around. And, um, as we as we we thought about it, you know, we the, the what this section really does bring is an amalgam of disparate, but quite and highly related um, uh, uh, issues in the consumer protection antitrust competition space. So we we came up with this uh, idea of our curious amalgam. It uh, has a had a little bit of an NPR intellectual uh, feel to it. It was not U.S. centric, which is obviously you know very important. It didn't it purposely did not include any references to the law, scales of justice, law books, uh, etc. And it enabled us to create a clever logo, frankly, that most importantly fit on and looked good on a, the iPod or the Apple uh, iPhone podcast. Um, you know, the, the little logos are on there. We wanted people to be able to one click have access to this entire world of, uh, of our podcast and to be creative with a name and something that stuck and something that people remembered and will remember for a long time. So there must have been about 50,000 emails that we exchanged about what the name was going to be. I mean, some of my favorite, I mean, Brian said some of your favorite, but we went from, how about if it's in the green room? What about a smoke-filled room? What about a smoke-filled green room? And it just got to a point where one day we just got an email from Brian who said, hello, I'm Brian Henry, the chair of the antitrust law section. The name of our podcast will be Our Curious Amalgam. I have spoken. And from that day forward, that was the name of the podcast. (laughs) Uh, I would like to... uh let you guys hear what another member of the podcast committee had to say. This is from uh, Sergei Zaslavsky. This is Sergei Zaslavsky, co-host on Our Curious Amalgam. It's tough to pick just one favorite episode, but if I had to choose, it would be the breaking news special on the draft vertical merger guidelines that we did in January with Mike Keeley and Joanna Tsai. That episode combined many of the things that I like best about our Curious Amalgam. Uh, it was innovative. It was the first breaking news special that we did. And we put out a YouTube video as well as an audio podcast. Um, it was very timely. Uh, we got two great experts to analyze the draft guidelines just days after they were released. And it was a lot of fun to do. I hope you all have as much fun listening to our programs as we have making them. So, John, has it been fun? No, it's been a lot of fun. And, 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 and truly, one of the great things that, that's been fun is, is working with people like Sergey, who's so smart and so deep. Um, I've, I've made a career. I've told many people this. I've made a career out of um, surrounding myself with people who are smarter than me and then taking credit for their work. And that's that's really what we what I've been able to do on our Curious Amalgam to the extent, you know, to the extent, to the extent that, uh, that, that, that I'm associated with it. The, the episode that that he's talking about was was actually is, is a great example. Um, we we saw the the guidelines came out. It wasn't like CNN was going to do a special on it, but we saw the guidelines come out. We immediately called the two co chairs of the committee, got them to come into the studio, and we just banged out a, a banged out a report. And it was a very um, well received 
episode. Lots of people listen to it. So well, definitely one, definitely one to be proud of. Yeah. And his comment also highlights one of the, I think, great benefits of having a weekly, a regular podcast that can be kind of quickly turned around. It's one thing to read about, uh, you know, an event, a breaking news in, you know, Law 360 or, you know, through email chains and, and so forth. But it's an entirely different thing to be able to, you know, hit start and, and play and listen to a podcast that's, you know, short, well-designed and, and uh, you know, offers individuals speaking uh, about a topic that they're very knowledgeable about. And you just get a much more in-depth insight uh, as opposed to reading something on the, you know, across the email. One of the hosts uh, who I've enjoyed listening to is Kayla Odom, uh, who's also on the committee this year. And this is what she had to say. Hi, I'm Kayla Odom. I'm an attorney based in San Francisco, and I'm one of our co-hosts. One of my favorite episodes of the podcast this year was number seven, Too Much Influence? Consumer Protection for Online Reviews and Influencers. We see so much online and on social media these days. Influencers are people who share product reviews on social media to their followers. And these reviews and online product reviews in general can be really useful. But people deserve to know when reviews are verified, real, and not fake or done by robots. So I really enjoyed that this episode took a closer look into what's being done to protect consumers in this space. Brian, what do you think about that? You know, the role of the section uh, has been to really be a resource in the area of consumer protection, hasn't it? Uh, no, no question. And, and over the past uh, several years, the section really has expanded the offerings, um, you know, with our CPLD and and other books uh, dedicated to the the subject and really, you know, substantial recruiting efforts have, have uh, been underway. Uh, being able to offer consumer protection topics in the context of this podcast, I think has just further expanded the reach of the section in this, this area. And as I should note that, you know, the, the podcast is open to and available to anyone to, uh, to, to listen to. Anyone, it has an iPhone. Anywhere in the world can hit play and listen to our podcast, and they do. I'm sure John will talk about some of those uh, statistics. But I know, I know for a fact that, um, just as an example, the episode on the antitrust issues in the cheer uh, space and the, the cheerleading uh, world – I know that I have a, a lawyer friend at work uh, whose daughter is in cheer, and I mentioned the program to her, and that that episode went viral within her community, at least here in the Atlanta area. But it, you know, our episodes, particularly those that are, that are consumer protection oriented, that a lot of people can relate to, uh, a lot of folks listen to them outside the section, which is one of the purposes why we did the podcast. Yeah. The podcast has also been uh, a great opportunity for a lot of uh, newer lawyers, and one of these is Anora Wong, uh, and here's what she said. Happy birthday, our curious amalgam. My name is Anora Wong, and I have been privileged to be on OCA team. It's so hard for me to just pick one, but perhaps among all of my favorites, there is episode 28 with Leslie Fair, where we learned about the FTC's guidance on fair advertising and some of the most amusing examples of advertising tricks that may be deceptive to consumers. So, John, do you remember that episode? Was it very amusing? Well, so we had a great combination of a of a, of a Nora who's a who's you know very entertaining and Leslie Fair who's terrific, um, very funny and 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 look the the combination has been successful for us. Um, we've tried very very hard to give younger folks in the section an opportunity to be on the program. I don't, I, I, I think Nora's been a lawyer like twenty minutes, um, but she's very she's very deep and she speaking to her peers, which is, you know, wasn't a terrible thing when we were st realized we were starting to reach some of the younger members of the section. The other thing we did is we went out and we looked for people who haven't had as many turns to speak. Now, Leslie is a very experienced speaker, so she's not a great example, but we were able to find a lot of guests who are really very interesting 
and aren't necessarily the same people you would see on the speaking circuit, um, you know, in, in our community. So, yeah, Enora is definitely a, a dynamo, and I'm so glad that she had such a great experience with our Curious Amalgam. Uh, she actually reached out whenever we were talking about the name, and she indicated that the word amalgam reminded her of unpleasant dental visits. So I think we kind of turned her around that maybe that, that term uh, can be used in a much more uh, pleasant context. Well, I hope so. Um, another member of the podcast committee is Tammy Zhu. Uh, and here's what she had to say on the occasion of our curious birthday. My name is Tammy Zhu. My favorite Our Curious Amalgam episode is number 11. How do you put the bricks together? Evidence that makes a difference at merger trials. I loved that episode because I thought... Um, Katie Robson and John and Honora were hilarious. Um, everybody was super engaged and I learned a lot. So thank you for making that episode. Uh, happy birthday, our curious amalgam. Here's to many more. Well, that happened to be the episode that we did and then we had to redo again. So I, it sounds like we did better the second time. That's great. Um, another uh, podcast host is all the way across the pond, uh, Matthew Hall. Uh, here is what he had to say. Hello, this is Matthew Hall from McGuire Woods in London. My children would say that the best moment in any episode is when I allegedly say each time I co-host, let's take the 33,000 feet or big picture view. I have to be very careful to avoid saying that now, otherwise I get a lot of problems at home. Looking at my favorite episodes, I think there are two. First, from June 2020, number 64, where John and I talked with Emma Cochran of Linklaters on climate change, sustainability, and EU competition law, such an important topic, and I enjoyed preparing for that by reading around the subject. Second, number 16 from November 29, where John and Elise Dorsey talked with Melissa Maxman of Cohen and Gresser in Washington on a similar issue, antitrust in social responsibility agreements, looking at the U.S. antitrust issues around that. Thank you. So Matthew raises a good point uh, with respect to how international the podcast is. Brian, what do you think about that? Yeah, I, th I think uh, we've the podcast has been listened to in w well north of, of seventy countries. Uh, I think you know we're now well over fifty thousand listens. One of the purposes of pulling the podcast together and offering it on a regular basis was to draw in that international uh, attendance and make it as easy, you know, for somebody in India or Australia. Uh, New Zealand and Asia to listen to one of our podcasts, as well as somebody in, in downtown uh, Washington. And I probably would be remiss here if I don't mention that, you know, that um, there are two references to to John in that, that short clip. And I think we all have to, you know, reflect on the fact that John put a, John Roberti, uh, put an enormous amount of time into making uh, the podcast a success. I think he's participated in every single episode, if not almost every single episode. Uh, he had to prepare uh, the subject matter, organize the uh, guest speakers, you know, align with our, our extended podcast team. But he just put in a, an enormous, enormous amount of work pulling this off. And I think a lot of this, I, it's kind of easy to the un, unsung and, and really um, singing his praises now, but I think everyone should really recognize and, and appreciate the work that John put into making this thing a success. John, we tip our birthday hats to you. Now, another <coughs> another podcast committee member is Stephanie Saint-Jean. Uh, here is what she had to say. 
Hi, my name is Stephanie Saint-Jean. I'm an associate at McCarthy Citro. My favorite uh, episode of Our Curious Amalgam is uh, probably episode number 16. One is doing good, bad, and just in social responsibility agreements. Uh, while I do like the general topic and discussion, um, I think my favorite moment in the episode is actually at the very end when Melissa Maxman is discussing um, how to find great mentors and surround yourself with people that will help you grow into your career and um, as a person. So John, Stephanie's comment reminds me that, you know, a key part of every episode is to speak to the guests and ask them more personal questions about their careers. And uh, I believe there is something called the, the hat, the curious hat. Would you like to tell us a little bit about that and why that became an important feature of the show? Yeah. So, so from the beginning, one of the things we didn't want to do was to, in a typical program, you sort of start and then people dive right into the substance and, um, and, and you talk about the substance and then you're, you're done and you, and you immediately fall, fall off. We wanted to try to use the, the use the, um, the podcast as an opportunity for people to get to know folks around the section and frankly, for people to share tips and career advice uh, in, in a gentle way. I mean, it, just as building it into every single episode. So um, what we what we started to do was we we asked, we, 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 Brian, and listen, that was something that Brian really pushed us to try to do from the beginning, make it more, make it substantive, make it sophisticated, but also make it really accessible and make the guest very human. So what we decided to do was to ask the guests essentially three personal three pers more personal questions. The first one um, was, what advice would you give to your younger self, or what advice would you give to a younger lawyer or younger economist? Um, you know, if if you could, and that and I think that's that's really what Stephanie is is referring to. The second one, remarkably, was one that we we didn't used to tell the guests about in advance until they really struggled to figure out how to answer it, and that was we would ask the question. Tell us something interesting about yourself that we wouldn't know if we only knew you professionally. And before we started warning people we were going to ask that questions, we could play an entire episode of awkward silences that came out of that, that came in response to that question. The, the, the last thing we did was we came up with this idea of, and, and I, you know, I, Brian and I, I think, brainstormed this one afternoon about doing, um, pulling a question out of the hat. And we decided to call that the curious hat. And we came up with, you know, intro music and had an, uh, an announcer do it. And um, there's actually in, in the studio, uh, there actually is a series of hats there, explorers hats. And there's, you know, uh, you know, uh, all different kinds of that cowboy hat um, that we have used on the uh, to do that. And, and we made a list of the questions. And then I made I would ask the question. Then I would think about in advance. What's a funny follow up question that I could do that? And what ended up happening there was uh, Matthew Hall ended up telling me that I wasn't nearly as funny as I thought I was. Ah, uh, now Brian, you know the notion of making lawyers sound human, particularly antitrust uh, lawyers and economists, um, that's pretty radical. Why did you think that was so important? Well, again, I, I listen to a lot of podcasts uh, on my my daily commute, and. The ones that are most interesting are the ones where people, you know, just just as John's indicated, just freely talk and and don't follow a script and try to get certain points across. Um, this is like basically the anti of our spring meeting, you know, uh, with four panelists, everyone up there speaking very formally. We wanted to do something the entire opposite of that, of, of bringing folks in, putting them in a comfortable environment and just letting them be who they are. And we just we knew that it would reveal, um, you know, just uh, reveal uh, information relevant to our members in an entirely different way. And, you know, reflecting again on the curious hat, I mean, if it hadn't been for Blake and his studio and having all these hats around, that would not be in existence. And that whole concept probably would not have come to fruition. And it, it is now a very important and I think it, it, important part of this show. And I think people actually look forward to hearing the responses to the curious hat. There, there's somebody who's actually started a Twitter handle called the curious hat. 
I think there's somebody else called the curious cat, but um, yeah, I mean, I, I think people have, uh, people have latched onto that idea a little bit. That's great. Um, we have a very brief uh, answer to the question of what's your favorite episode from podcast host, Jessica Waters. Let's listen. Hi, my name is Jessica Waters. I'm a new committee member of Our Curious Amalgam and an associate at Scadden Arts in Washington, D.C. My favorite episode of Our Curious Amalgam is podcast number 50, Can Robots Collude? Understanding the Competition Implications of AI. You know, that's, a, that's actually a great episode. Um, and, and one of the things, again, it, it goes back to a theme we've been talking about. That was, that was featuring uh, Kelly Fain, who's an associate at Latham. And uh, it turns out she actually knows a ton about this um, and is really terrific. But again, as Brian talked about on our normal speaking circuit, not necessarily somebody we'd be able to give a, a, a speaking slot to. So delighted to have her on. She did a tremendous job and it was an interesting topic. It was a cutting edge topic that I think younger lawyers were really thinking about. And, and, uh, and, and I guess it spoke to Jessica. Well, that's great. We've got two more memories to share um, before the show has to end. Uh, the first one's from Wendy Wasmer. Hi, everyone. It's Wendy Wasmer, and happy anniversary to our great, our Curious Amalgam team. I have to say my favorite episode was episode two, um, which was Long Live Leniency. Um, and the reason it was my favorite, it was the very first time I was in the studio with John and Lisa Phelan and Craig Lee. And it was just so great to see um, see them, our DOJ friends. And um, it was just the first time we'd ever recorded anything. I actually remember that episode, and it was an impressive one. Um, Brian, did you happen to catch it too? Uh, I did. Yeah, no, it, 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 f- particularly for being so early in our production cycle, uh, it was amazing. It came off as, as well as it did. But, you know, John was behind the production there in Blake, and it was in very good hands. And again, we had top-notch guests, so it was sort of hard to screw up. Well, that helps. Uh, and finally, I want to give... Um, the podcast committee's young lawyer representative, uh, a little bit of the last word. I really liked what he had to say. Take it away, Matt Harper. Hi, I'm Matt Harper, the young lawyer representative to Our Curious Amalgam. And my favorite moment of every episode is when I stop and go, huh, I hadn't really thought about that before. So, Brian, do you think that sums up nicely you know, one of the the ways in this po- the ways in which this podcast uh, can really enrich uh, you know the section members' understanding of the issues. Yeah, absolutely. I mean, it's NPR, right? You listen to an episode and say, "Yeah, I hadn't thought about that before." So uh, he 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 captured it uh, perfectly. And John, do you think the fact that uh, people are working off script? helps bring out some insights they might not otherwise share if they were working from a script. We, um, <laughs> yes, we, again, we've been, we've been really uh, pressing our guests and, and our, and our team as well to get away from the crutch of a written document that you read from. We a hundred percent, we, um, we think that the, the best discussions come up when, you listen to the other speaker, you share your own experiences, and then you ask a good follow up question. And all of a sudden, you start you start having a dialogue, and people start talking about people stop getting out of the of the Q and A mode and start just talking to one another, and 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 the issues get explored. So yeah, it's it's it's, it's something again that we've been trying to. It, it's something that doesn't come innately to a lot of lawyers that we've had to learn, and hopefully, we'll keep trying to get better at it. That's great. Before we wrap everything up, I want to ask one question uh, of each of you. uh, And that is, what do you think you've learned about being involved in the podcast over the past year? And we'll start with Brian. Now, I think the, the podcast, uh, the podcast highlights the innovative use of technology and what technology can bring to the, the antitrust section. You know, for the past couple of years, we've really dug deep into figuring out ways to get the, our message out to our, our members in creative ways. 
And what I learned is that we actually can do it if we we get the right uh, people involved. And it, certainly, you know, asking John to to be the leader on this this program was a critical and just absolutely fundamental decision that that made this a success. But all of the the team members, every single one who spoke on on the program today uh, through their recordings, uh, it was having the the great team. The right technology, uh, the the right production, the right production atmosphere. If you put all of that together, and it shows that we, the antitrust section, can be creative and do things that are out of the box with a little bit of planning and trusting everybody to bring their best selves and and their creativity to the process. That it's it's going to work, um, and I, I and that's something I think that. Uh, you know, hopefully the podcast will continue for, for many years uh, going forward and we'll continue to offer offer this to our, our members. But it um, it just shows that, you know, the antitrust section is something special and its members are, are very special. And John, what have you learned? So uh, not unlike Brian, um, when we when we first started this, we actually didn't really have a whole lot of rules. We kind of we asked around and told and we were told people's average commute is between eighteen and twenty two minutes, so you should aim for twenty minutes uh, of substance on your on your program. Naturally, as lawyers, our, our programs are more like thirty. But um, what it what it freed us from was the idea: oh, we have to cover all these all these different issues. We thought we lived in a world where, as Brian said, we thought we had to have four people speaking on a panel for an hour. And we realized we didn't really have to do that, that if we, we could have one guest who spoke on a fairly narrow issue and then ta- also talk a little bit conversationally in that, and that would, that would speak to people as well. We came to realize that actually, you know, <laughs> if you want to reach the younger members of the community, maybe you ask the younger members of the community what they think and try to incorporate their ideas and, 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 their, and what's important to them. And how they re- how they communicate with each other. That was pr- that one's probably the most important one. Is um, it, it? We we just kind of took took a concept and um, and said we're not really bound by any rules. What'll work? And we played with it a little bit. And I think we've now gotten to a place where we're kind of in a rhythm. So hopefully we're hopefully we're reaching people. Hopefully that we're giving people some good information that's sophisticated but is accessible to them. Hopefully people will listen and, and get to know others in the section and realize, you know, there's actually some pretty fun, interesting people around. Um, it's been a great experience. And with that, I'm afraid we'll have to bring the party to an end. Thank you, Brian Henry. Thank you, John Roberti. Uh, It's been uh, a wonderful year. Let's hope that uh, the momentum can keep going into the coming year. So have a curious day, everybody. Thank you for listening to this week's episode of Our Curious Amalgam, a competition, consumer protection, data protection, and privacy law podcast. It is produced and shared around the globe by ABA's Antitrust Law Section. The opinions expressed by the participants in this podcast are their own and do not necessarily represent their employer or other organizations. If you like what you heard or would like to become a member of the American Bar Association, please check out what the Antitrust Section has to offer at ambar.org antitrust. You can learn more about our podcast at at ourcuriousamalgam.com. If you have comments, suggestions, or podcasts, podcast ideas, please reach out to us at podcast at ourcuriousamalgam.com. Until next time, thank you for listening.